Okay. All right, folks, so this is gonna be the central locking. It does work, uh, but there are some tricks that you have to do with it. Um, and again, it's a 30 year old van. So to lock the car, I usually, did you hear that? I usually press this so that it could uh, receive the current from this central locking to this one, and then it also locks or unlocks the back of the van. To unlock the van, that's easy. And this one will always successfully unlock. So we'll do it again for those of you who didn't catch it the first time around. So you lock it, and then you probably heard it click, uh, and that basically does that. So now you can see this is, on, this is locked, and then if I unlock it, this will always successfully unlock. It's the locking part that you have to just push this in. So now you can see that it's locked. So one last time without me saying anything. So right now this is unlocked, and this is unlocked. So I'm gonna lock it, press that, and then the whole car is locked. This door, that door, the gate, and then the back hatch. So locked, locked, and then the back's locked. Now for the back of the van, and then you can see that's open again. Oh, and then I want to show you, see, this is basically the, uh, um, the connectors where the lockings received or where it communicates to the rest of the doors. The front door, the passenger door, the gate, and the back hatch. Uh, we're going to come around to the back, and I'll show you this part. So this, if you notice that, yeah, it did it, good. All right, so when the central locking is supposed to unlock all the doors, this sometimes doesn't get locked or unlocked, so I just simply put the key in there, turn it, press it, and then voila, it's, it opens, and there you go. So that's the whole story with the central locking system. And since I'm back here, I just want to show one more thing. The shocks on this van uh, for the back gate are, they work like they were designed. And I'm going to ask my um, camera guy. Oh, and they're also, I guess he can come out to this way. They're German. So I'm a purist. I really like to stick with a lot of like the OEM components uh, and stuff. So. To demonstrate another thing that I saw in the VW brochure back in the 70s and the 90s, that you're supposed to be able to put the van's gate in any position and it'll stay. But this one, you can see that they're strong uh, shocks and it'll always put the, for a 30 year old car, it's always going to lift it up. But I saw a video where you can like put the, oh, it's doing it here. And you can also do it in this angle and it'll stay. But the good thing, even though it's not staying, that it lifts the gate all the way up. All right, everybody. So some quick detail on the exterior of the Vanagon. The mud flaps are South African um, and they, I had them professionally installed. I, there's four of them in the package that, or the um, thing that I got. And as you can see, when I had them professionally installed, I asked the guys to uh, use the anchor that came uh, with the van or I'm sorry with the mud flaps a lot of people that buy these South African mud flaps they'll install them but they don't put those anchors on them and they look and feel a little bit flimsy at touch but these ones are very solid and they won't uh, flap or fall off at high speeds or if you're doing some light off-roading the uh, the side markers, these are from, uh, they're, they're upgraded from uh, GW, that company that I was telling you about. They are LED. On the bumper, these are fiberglass bumpers. So for those of you know that um, they actually uh, absorb impact really well, um, but I want to protect them as much as I can. So what I did was I put a rubber stripping that looks OEM all around the bumpers and then also on the side cladding as well and I'll show you that in a bit. These are upgraded uh, lights. Um, this is supposed to be amber, but this upgrade light uh, lamp housing for the rear, it's, um, I forgot the company that makes it, they're based out of Germany, but it's white, but I have an amber bulb in there. Uh, the Karat emblem, 
Um, it's original to the van. I bought the uh, overlay sticker to have the Karat font pop out from the GW site. And that's basically what that looks like. I think it was like $4 for the, um, for the, uh, this, uh, font covering from the outside. So, uh, the bottom part, you're probably wondering, this is not factory, but I just thought that, uh, putting these two strips on the bottom, one, it's going to help protect, uh, the key from scratching the body of the car. And it also breaks up some of the red. And I think that it breaks up some of the red pretty nicely. So I decided to go with the chrome on the bottom and yellow on the top. And you'll see that I carry that kind of character in the front of the van on the front of the grill. This is an upgrade from uh, Volkswagen. It's um, for, I think, the newer VW emblems from 2000. That was the color that they went with and I thought it would look good on the van again. The back windshield uh, wiper, or the back wiper for the window, the motor's there, but it needs to be twinked to get it working. That same sticker that I told you about on the Karat, this is on the Vanagon side. And we're gonna work our way to the side of the van. This is the stripping that I put on the cladding. I added that just so when people are at the parking lot and they don't pay attention to their door opening, their door will come into contact with this thing first, which is rubber. Um, what else have I done? Uh, up here, this is the, um, the mounts for the, uh, I think it's a tool basket that I have on top of the van. That's a Yakima rack and the uh, window deflector. There's one on this side and there's one on the other side. I like it because when I'm traveling at 45 miles per hour and I wanna crack the window open a little bit without that noise, uh, this really helps um, deaden that sound or, or stop that noise from entering the van. Uh, the mirrors are in perfect shape. They work. They're electric mirrors. The control's on the driver's side, so that's in really good shape. And over here, I have the uh, Wolfsburg emblem. This is not original, but I uh, earlier in the video, I... Uh, so the yellow stripping that you saw in the back, I carried that over to the front. Um, I have the German uh, flag colors, and there's the new VW emblem. This is the uh, badge of the seven major cities of Germany. And, oh, and then for the lights, these are the H4 headlamps, European spec. Um, the US spec H5, I had to take those out because they're not bright. For all you Vanagon enthusiasts, you know that having the H4 spec European lights produce way much better lighting performance. So you can see that they are brand new looking. Um, and then I decided to go with the white uh, blinkers for the front instead of the ambered, amber housing blinker lamps. There is an LED uh, amber light in there. The whole car um, uh, blinker systems are LED. And on the bottom of the van, the spoiler down here, I had my uh, body shop uh, install the uh, road lights. I guess some of you would want to call those like fog lights, but earlier in the video you saw that those turn on. So I had mine installed there. Some of you who may not know what this hole is original for, it's to channel the air over to where the brakes are when you're driving, but this car is not a, a performance car. Uh, I decided to use a hole there to install the road lights and it works really well at night. It lights up the road pretty good. I can drive the van with just these lights on and it's enough light to see where I'm going. But when I have these lights on and the up uh, top lights on, that's really adequate or more than adequate lighting uh, for driving at night on rural roads. So I think, oh, and then the uh, antenna, uh, it's not a power antenna, but it's the original factory antenna. The grommet on the side I had to replace, so the other one was dry rot. So that's basically what the antenna looks like. And I think that is a, oh, and then also one other last thing before we show the drive van, uh, the van driving. These are the 16 inch Mercedes rims from the GW site. Um, I got that with the all-terrain general grabber tires. 
and the um, Synchro Zero Lift Suspension. So you're probably wondering uh, why the Vanagon seems a little bit higher than a regular Karat. It's because I have the uh, Synchro Zero Lift Suspension Kit that I purchased from GW and had installed the, on the van. So it gives it a nice uh, lift. You're probably wondering why I have this installed on a Karat. It's because I take the van uh, on the back roads a lot to go camping and that's why I needed to have the, the van lifted in order to uh, clear the larger general grabber all-terrain tires. And on the back, the last part of our video, I had uh, from the GW site, I ordered disc brakes. So the disc or the uh, braking system in the back of the Vanigans are drum, just regular Vanigans and Karats. But this one has uh, the the disc brakes uh, that I got, again, as I mentioned, from the GW site. So if you have any additional questions about like specifics on the components that I've upgraded and installed in the van, let me know, and I'll be more than happy to share all the information that I can with you about that.